So I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, some implications to cosmology from what I call internal relativity, which is my view of my attempt to do something about quantum gravity. Um, so, so the starting point is sort of, is, is sort of uh, goes back to the, to the early days of special relativity. And what I want to point out is that there are essentially two views um, of special relativity which are, um, which are different, which are, uh, for special relativity, they don't make a difference, but for GR they do. So in the, in the early days, what we had was Lorentz came up um, and, and found basically all of special relativity by looking at what matter does. In this case, it was, it was Maxwell's equations. So he looked at Maxwell's equations and he asked the question, well, given that matter is described by Maxwell's equations, what would an observer using uh, measuring apparatuses made from stuff that obeys Maxwell's equations, what would that observer actually see? And he found all these things, time dilation, time um, um, uh, length contractions, and all these things, which is why we call it Lorentz contraction and stuff like that. He found all these things. And he did that by looking at matter. So, so in some sense, uh, what Lorentz did was he looked at matter, and from that he found what the geometry was in that case in the cosmic space. So this is not what, what, what the way we look at special relativity these days. What, what we, what the path that we followed is the path that Einstein set, set us on, which is that we have some background, which is Minkowski space, and then we take, we, we look at matter that conforms uh, to that background, right? So, so it's, it's very different. One, and on the one side you have matter that defines geometry, on the other side you have, um, you have matter that is on a certain geometry and you, you, you ask it to, to, to conform to that geometry. Um, right, so, so for Lorentz, um, the, the physics of the system, the, that is the matter, defines the, the symmetries and for Einstein it's the symmetries of the system um, that are fixed, that, that, that are fixed in the background uh, and, and you have to, the, the matter has to, has to obey by these. And so what I want to do is I want to say, I want to ask the following question. So, so what we did in, with the development of GR and then all subsequent developments, we followed this. So basically we, we took a Minkowski space uh, at, 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 at every space-time <coughs> point and the new thing about GR is that we sort of patched them together in, in, in a curved way. Um, and I want to ask the question, well, could we, could we also follow this path to GR? Could we stick to this where we ask sort of the, the matter, um, the matter what, the, what the curvature is? Could we do that? So that is sort of my goal. That, that's what I, my, my, my thing is. So why could that be important? Why could that be interesting? And I want to point out, just point to two things. So the first thing is the, this cosmological constant problem, um, which immediately Get, uh, has to be seen in a different light if you follow this other path. So, so in, if, you, if you look at sort of the standard way that it is presented, then what you find is sort of th this way. You see the matter which is on top of, of, of space-time, which is the uh, sort of the Einstein way of looking at it. And so, so you add up all these, these zero-point fluctuations and you get this huge number and, and it's a mess. Um, and that, so, so that, if you, if, you, if you follow that argument, you see that it is absolutely necessary for that, that you have this picture that matter is on space-time, and then you have to ask the question, well, what happens to the zero-point fluctuations? Don't they do something? Um, in, in this picture that, um, that, that I was proposing, this, is, this argument immediately doesn't go through, right? Because it's, the, it's the, the excitations, it's the matter that defines the geometry, so it doesn't sit on anything. So this kind of image that you have when you do your calculation is, it disappears. So that's the first point I want to make. And the second point I want to make is, is, uh, is, is an application to, um, to cosmology. Um, so the, the point is this, that if geometry is defined by matter, and matter can emerge in something like a tr phase transition, so think of a spin model or something like that, and you have the excitations emerging in some, uh, in some phase transition. Then what follows if you put these two things together is that geometry can emerge in the phase transition. And again, this is not possible in the, in the, uh, in the Einstein point of view because you, just to formulate what matter is, you need to have the space time for that, right? Because that's, that's where it sits on. So the question is, uh, why, is that, why could that be interesting? And so this is the picture I have. So you have some phase, um, then you have phase transition, and you have the, 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 the stuff emerging. 
And it's this stuff that defines the geometries of these things you can think of as this sort of light cones. So why is that interesting? It can potentially tell you something about things like the horizon problem. Um, so, so we have this horizon problem, and the way one can see that in, 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 this, in, in this theory is that um, you get the horizon problem because you are taking the, the causality that we have around us now, and you apply it to regions where it doesn't, where it doesn't uh, work yet. So you apply it for regions before the phase transition. So since, since in, the, in, this, in this region, this, this causality given by these excitations doesn't, uh, doesn't apply. The, this causality that we know, that we sort of see from here as observers sitting here, doesn't apply here. So the, the fact that you see correlations here is, is, not a, is not a big mystery anymore in this, in this case. Um, so the question then, of course, um, yeah, that's what I said. So the question then, of course, is do you, do you get the right spectrum? And you have to be sort of a bit, a bit fast. Um, so, so you want to calculate the, the, uh, the spectrum of the, of the, grab, uh, of, um, the, the, the scalar gravitational, uh, of, sorry, the, the gravitational fluctuation. That's what you want to calculate. And so you need, you need some, some connection. And I don't have time to argue that, that there's a connection between, between phi, the, the, um, the scalar gravitational potential, and, and the order parameter in my, in my, in my model. Um, so since that connection is there, what you, have to, what you have to do is you have to calculate the spectrum of fluctuation of that order parameter. And that can be done. And what you find is that you, you do find uh, a scale-free spectrum. But the question is, can you do better than that? Can you, can you find more? Because we, we, we know that it's not just a scale-free spectrum, but there's sort of a <coughs> tilt in it. And there's some intriguing thing which, which unfortunately doesn't so, there's, so, so if you look at the, the, um, um, at the fluctuations of, of this order parameter, the real thing always contains one of these critical exponents. And if you look at the critical <coughs> exponents, what value it has, it always has a value that is very close to the, to the tilt that is actually seen. Right? So, so if you look at the, the tilt of the, uh, of the spectrum, it's always of this order. And the point is that these things... Um, the, the, this order of, of for this for this critical exponent is always the same. So, so if you do a theoretical calculation and an experiment, it's always in this region that you need. The only problem is the only problem is the sign here, which unfortunately is the wrong one. But so, so I, I have to I have to sort of see what happens during this phase transition. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much.